cloud is difficult to learn. Cloud is only for techies. Cloud certifications take a long time to do. No, no, and no again. Cloud is easy to learn. And you can do some of the beginner cloud certifications in AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud in less than two weeks. How do I know? I'm Ranga Karnam. I'm 10x certified in AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud as well. Our courses are helping thousands of learners do their cloud certifications in AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. In this series of videos, we'll be focusing on cloud fundamentals. Once you understand the fundamentals of cloud, you will see that learning AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud becomes really, really easy. Are you ready to make learning cloud easy? Let's get started. In the last few videos, we talked about a lot of compute offerings. We talked about virtual machine offerings in different clouds. We talked about different serverless offerings. We talked about container offerings, container orchestration offerings. We talked about managed services, platform as a service. So we talked about a lot of compute services. And the objective of this specific video is to review all the compute focused services. In a lot of scenarios, you need to be able to decide which compute service to make use of. Should you go for VMs? Should you go? Uh, for a platform as a service offering? Should you go for containers? Should you go for container orchestration? How do you decide that? That's what we will be focusing on in this specific video. We'll be looking at all the three clouds, AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. So let's get started. So earlier, we talked about the fact that the simplest way to deploy applications to the cloud is to create VMs, right? So you can just create simple VMs, and you can actually deploy your applications to the cloud and you can take care of everything on it. You can install your specific operating system. You can install whatever applications you would want. You can install whatever software you would want, and you can customize it. You can SSH into it. You can do whatever you want on these specific virtual machines. When you go for virtual machines, everything is in your control. So you need to actually create a group of virtual machines, and probably you would need to create something like a load balancer to load balance between all of them. So you would have your VM1, VM2, 3, 4, and your application would be deployed to these VMs, and you are responsible for everything. That's the VM option, right? We also talked about platform as a service offerings or the managed service offerings, right? So all these help you, instead of focusing on each of these, like instead of working on a VM, a group of VMs, instead of uh, focusing on setting up a load balancer and all that kind of things. When you're going to a platform as a service offering, what you do is you'd configure something as a whole. Oops, let me get this right. So you'd configure something as a whole. So to your managed service, you'd give a few inputs. You would say, this is the application I would want to deploy. This is the code. This is the configuration I would need. And it would take care of creating the virtual machines. It would take care of creating the load balancer. It would take care of setting up auto scaling. It would take care of ensuring that uh, auto scaling is taken care of. And all that stuff is taken care of by the platform as a service offering. So all that you need to provide it is a piece of code and configuration. We also looked at containers, right? So if you have a lot of different microservices and each of them uh, have different ways of deployment, that's not good, right? That's where you can go for containers, where you can create a container image. And once you have a container image for a specific microservice, you would be deploying it the same way. And that's where all the cloud platforms provide a number of services to run your containers as well. So there are a lot of container offerings as well. And when you have a lot of microservices, let's say I would want 100 instances of microservice one, 1,000 instances of microservice two, 10,000 instances of microservice three, that's where we would go with container orchestration. Whether we are talking about PaaS, containers, container orchestration, what we are focusing on is the server. So we are like when we talk about container orchestrator, we are talking about a cluster, master node, server, I mean, master node, worker nodes, and things like that. When we talk about platform as service, we are talking about specific VMs and things like that, right? A lot of times you don't really want to worry about the infrastructure at all. You just want to pay for how many invocations which are coming in. You just want to pay for how much data you are storing. You don't really worry about where that function is running, where the data is stored, and things like that. And that's where you can go for serverless offerings. And as far as compute art is concerned, you would go for serverless functions. So that's the function as a service offerings which are present in the different cloud platforms. 
So these are some of the options that you would have in almost every cloud, right? Whenever you are making use of VMs, what is the thing that we are making use of in AWS? We are making use of EC2. You might be making use of auto scaling group to create multiple instances of EC2. And you would also maybe use elastic load balancing to distribute the load between them. So these are the options which are present in AWS with respect to VMs. You would go to VMs when you would need specific customization on your VM. You want specific OS, which is not available otherwise, or you would want specific kind of applications, specific kind of software installed. You'd want to be able to SSH into them and do a lot of stuff there, right? That's when you would go for VMs. Otherwise, you'd want to go for one of the managed service offerings. You'd want to go for platform as a service or a container, container orchestration or a function as a service offerings. When you have specific needs where you cannot use these services, that's when you go for VMs. In case of Azure, these are called Azure VMs, right? So you use Azure VMs and in Azure, you would use scale sets to create a group of Azure VMs. And you also have Azure load balancer to load balance between multiple instances. In Google Cloud, you have Google Compute Engine, which is the compute, which is the service which you can use to create virtual machines. You can create managed instance groups to create multiple instances, multiple VM instances, and you can use Google Cloud load balancing. So Google Cloud load balancing is what you would use to load balance between multiple VM instances, multiple instances created using a managed instance group, for example. Now. If we go to platform as a service offerings, we don't want to worry about load creating load balancers, creating VM groups and things like that. I don't really want to worry about it. All that I would want is to give a code, piece of code, like maybe a jar file, a var file, a Python application code, right? So I just want to give that a, a, a kind of a artifact and I would want the service to take care of everything for me. I would want the service to take care of availability, I would want the service to take care of scaling and everything all of that kind, right? In that kind of situation, I would go for platform as a service. In AWS, the platform as a service offering is Elastic Beanstalk. In the background, Elastic Beanstalk creates exactly the same setup that you would create when you use EC2, ASG, and ELB combination. However, it's a simplified configuration. You flow through a, flow through a few screens, you'd select the right options, and everything would be set up for you. In Azure, we have web apps. So Azure web apps is what you would use if you just want to give code and configuration and don't worry about anything else. And in Google Cloud, you can make use of App Engine. One of the fun facts about App Engine is that App Engine is a service which is available in Google Cloud. You would not even believe this <laughs> from 2008. So S3 is one of the AWS services, which is really, really uh, like one of the first services which is introduced by AWS, but App Engine actually goes really, really way back. It goes to 2008, almost one and a half decades back, right? A little bit more than that. So yeah, it's, it's quite uh, an old service. And this was one of the first offerings from Google Cloud. Actually, maybe it's not even called Google Cloud at that particular point in time. I'm not very sure. <laughs> okay, so that's when you have code. Right? So a lot of times you would want to create a container and then deploy it, right? So these uh, platform as a service offerings also are able to run containers, but they need a little bit more configuration than the container as a service offerings. So that's the reason why you would go for container as a service offerings. Like in AWS, it's Fargate. So it's AWS Fargate. It's a serverless version of ECS, Elastic Container Service. And in Azure, you would go for Azure Container Instances. So a Azure Container Instances. And in Google Cloud, there is Cloud Run. Cloud Run is compatible with Knative. Knative is a serverless approach to run Kubernetes, and Cloud Run is compatible with it. And when you are playing with Fargate or ACIS, uh, Azure Container Instances or Cloud Run, you don't really need to worry about server and things like that. All that you need to provide is a container image and the configuration you would want and these services would run them for you. The next thing is container orchestration. In AWS, we have two options. ECS is Elastic Container Service. It's a AWS specific one. And you also have EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Service. And in Azure, you have AKS, Azure Kubernetes Service. And in Google Cloud, it's GKE, Google Kubernetes Engine. 
So these are all the Kubernetes related services, right? So when do you go for container orchestration? When you have very, very complex microservices kind of architecture where you have multiple microservices, you'd want to be able to manage the releases for them. You'd want to be able to auto scale them. Uh, and you have a lot of complex other requirements. And in those kind of situations, you would go for container orchestration. And these are all the container orchestration related services which are present. Now, if you don't really want to worry about servers at all, and all that you would want to provide is a snippet of code, a function of code, that's where you would go for the serverless functions offering, function as a service. The most popular one is obviously AWS Lambda, right? So AWS Lambda is the most popular one. I would say almost 80% of the function as a service offerings or uh, function as a service usage is in AWS Lambda. Uh, the other ones are Azure Functions, and Google Cloud Functions. So if you just want to run a piece of code when something is uploaded to a bucket, or if you would want to run a specific piece of code to minimize or create a thumbnail from an image, in those kind of situations, you can go for the function as a service offerings. You'll only pay for the invocations. So when an image is uploaded, you just want to run the code. Like if 100 images are uploaded, you'd pay for 100 invocations. So you don't really need to have a server running all the time and monitoring if there is an image uploaded and all that kind of fun stuff, right? So that's when you'd go for function as a service offerings and AWS Lambda, Azure Functions and Google Cloud Functions are the offerings from different clouds. So what we are looking at in here is to get a high level overview around all the compute offerings in different clouds. We looked at virtual machines, which is also called the IaaS way, infrastructure as a service way, right? You have entire responsibility. You are responsible for the OS, you are responsible for the application software, you are responsible for application code, you are responsible for availability, you are responsible for scalability. If you don't want all the responsibility, if you'd want to give some of the responsibility to the cloud provider, that's where you would go for all these things on the right hand side. So if you want to have a jar file or a war file or a python application or a node.js application and you want to run it as it is you can go for platform as a service offerings if you want to create a container image and run them then you can go for the container offerings if you have a very complex architecture where you have hundreds of applications running and you want to have clusters where you'd want to run them you want container orchestration features that's when you go for container orchestration if you don't really want to worry about servers at all, all that you want to care about is code, that's when you would go for the function as a service offerings or the serverless functions kind of offerings. Now, as we see in here, there are a lot of services in AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud related to compute. How do you remember them? How do I remember them? The answer to that is experience, right? I've been playing with cloud for a few years now and AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. That experience really, really helps. And another thing I constantly do is to actually look at a specific documentation which is provided by Google Cloud. This documentation helps us to compare the different services which are present in AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. If you just do a Google search for compare AWS and Azure with Google Cloud, you'd land up on this page. This is on a website called cloud.google.com. And you can go in here and look at all the different services which are present. You can see that this is a huge page. I mean. If, if I try to print it, I think it was like 20, 25 pages. So there are a lot of services in each of the cloud platforms. And remembering all of them is not easy. So I usually go here whenever I have questions. For example, I want to find out what is the corresponding service for EC2, right? So I just type in EC2 and then, then I can scroll down and I can find out where EC2 is, right? So this is the core compute. Uh, so you can see EC2 in here. So in AWS, it's Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud. And the corresponding ones in Google Cloud is Compute Engine, it's Google Compute Engine. And for Azure, it's Azure Virtual Machines. And let's say I want to find out what are the comparable services to App Engine. If I can come here, I can type in App Engine. You can see that the platform as a service offering App Engine. Uh, this is used to build highly scalable applications on a fully managed serverless platform. And the AWS corresponding AWS offering is AWS Elastic Beanstalk. And you have an Azure offering of Azure App Service. Similar to that, for example, if I would want to look for cloud functions, right? So it's a serverless functions offering or the functions as a service offering. 
and the Google Cloud Google Cloud product is Cloud Functions. This helps you to run your code with zero server management with this scalable pay-as-you-go functions as a service offering. And the corresponding AWS offering for that is AWS Lambda. This is the most popular one. And the Azure offering is Azure Functions. And the other ones we looked at are the Kubernetes-related ones, right? So if you go over it and type in Kubernetes, you can see that the container as a service offering is Google Kubernetes Engine in Google and in Google Cloud, actually. And in AWS, it's EKS and ECS, Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service and Amazon Elastic Container Service. And the corresponding one is Azure Kubernetes Service in Azure. And also, if you are looking at Istio, uh, you can run Istio as a service mesh on all the places, GKE, EKS, and EKS as well. And we also looked at multi-cloud option, right? So the multi-cloud option we talked about when you want to run Kubernetes in multiple clouds is Anthos. So the Google Cloud product for multi-cloud is Anthos and the AWS offering, corresponding AWS offering is Amazon EKS Anywhere and Amazon ECS Anywhere is the corresponding offering uh, for Amazon ECS. And if you want to run uh, some of the Azure services in a multi-cloud way, right? So that's where you go for Azure Arc. So this is the place I would go for typically whenever I have questions, once I understand one cloud sufficiently, like once I am good at one of these clouds, right? AWS or Azure or Google Cloud, I would go to this particular page and try and find out what is the corresponding service in Google Cloud, what is the corresponding service in Azure, so that I'll be able to understand it very, very well. So I hope this was useful and I'll see you again. I'm sure you had a great time watching this video. Do not keep it to yourself. Tell your friends and tell YouTube as well. How do you do that? Like, share and subscribe. If you're looking to get cloud certified, check out our cloud certification courses in AWS, Azure and Google Cloud. And do not forget to check out the other videos in this series of videos on cloud fundamentals. If there is a cloud topic that you're feeling it's very, very difficult to understand, do post it in the comments and we will make it simple for you. I'm sure you had a great time watching this video and I'll see you again very, very soon. Until then, here's bye from Ranga at In 28 Minutes. See you soon.